saying something, but I didn't. There you go. Good morning. Good to see everyone this morning. We're going to go ahead and begin with our morning worship service. As always, we're thankful to God for, again, the privilege to just be here uh, in the house of worship. Y'all all right this morning? Y'all look awful, awful good this morning. We ask those that are tuning in with us by, uh, by virtual uh, satellite or by virtual YouTube, whatever your uh, uh, avenue is on this morning, just good to have you with us on this blessed day. Uh, as we begin our service today, we're going to ask Brother Ryan Lanier and Brother Jordan Sanders going to be our song leaders for today. Brother Billy Thompson has our scripture text. Uh, Brother Russell Smith will lead our, our hearts in prayer. Uh, and the lesson today will come from our own Brother Michael Story. So we're looking forward to having a wonderful time in the Lord. God is still good, isn't he? Yeah. I said, God is still good, isn't he? Yeah. Uh, somebody said he's good all the time and all the time. Certainly God is good. And our prayers are with Brother Ellis this morning as he labels at the Jackson Street Congregation praying that things will be well with him. So with that being said, we're going to ask everyone, if you would, to get a songbook uh, as one of our song leaders come uh, with our opening song for this beautiful Lord's Day. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, first, let's read page 56, and for the page 56 in my veins. Page 56 and folder, if you have it, let us sing. It's in my veins, Lord, it's in my veins. It's in my veins, Lord, it's in my veins. While the blood is Running warm in my veins, oh Lord, it's in my veins, it's in my veins, Lord, it's in my veins, it's in my veins, Lord, it's in my veins, while the blood is running warm in my veins, oh Lord, it's in my veins, and I'm gonna shout. A little over here, and I'm gonna shout just a little over there. While the blood is running warm in my, oh Lord, it's in my veins. It's in my veins, Lord, it's in my veins. It's in my veins, Lord, it's in my veins. While the blood is running warm in my veins oh lord it's in my veins and i'm gonna pray a little over here and i'm gonna pray just a little over there while the blood is running warm in my veins oh lord it's in my veins it's in my veins, Lord, it's in my veins. It's in my veins, Lord, it's in my veins. While the blood is running warm in my Oh, Lord, it's in my veins. And I'm going to sing a little over here. And I'm going to sing just a little over there. While the blood is running warm in my oh lord it's in my veins it's in my veins lord it's in my veins it's in my veins i got it in my veins while the blood is running warm in my Oh Lord, it's in my veins, it's in my veins, Lord, it's in my veins, it's in my veins, I got it in my veins, while the blood is running warm in my, oh Lord, it's in my veins. Uh, next, 
next question will be page 273. Page 273. If you have it, let us sing. There is a name I love to hear, and I love to sing its worth. And it sounds like music in my ear, and the sweetest name on and I'm singing now, oh, oh, how I love Jesus, oh, oh, how I love Jesus, and oh, oh, how I love Jesus, because he first loved me. And it tells me of a Savior's love who died to set me free. Jesus, because he first loved me. Scripture lesson this morning to be taken from the book of Job, the chapters 42, verses 1 through 5. Then Job answered the Lord and said, I know that thou can't do everything, and that no thought can be withheld from thee. Who is he that hideth counsel without knowledge? Therefore I uttered that I understood not things too wonderful for me, which I knew not. Here I beseech thee, and I will speak. I will demand of thee, and declare that unto me. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, mm -hmm. but now my eye seeth thee. I will ask the, re I will ask the reader yeah. verse 5 again. I have heard of thee by the hearing of the ear, on, but now my eye seeth thee. Yeah. Yeah. Thus goes the reading. May God have the blessing to the readers and hearing his words. The brother take us to the throne of God in prayer. Amen. Oh, how I want to see him. Dear Heavenly Father, again and again, Lord, we just come. Just want to say thank you for the many blessings you have given to us. Lord, we just want to thank you for traveling grace. Lord, we want to thank you for the roof over our head and the clothes on our back. Lord, we just want to thank you for the one that have job and the one that may be unemployed. But, Lord, we know we can call on you, and you'll still yeah. make things work out. Lord, I don't know how to pray or don't know the thing to pray for, but we just going to call on you, Lord, and you'll answer our prayer. Yeah. Lord, I know you sit up high and you look down low. And, Lord, I just ask you to come in today, lifting up a bow down head, giving ease to those troubled mind. Lord, there's a lot of our brothers and sisters that are sick, but I don't have to remind you, Lord. You know all about them. Yeah. But, Lord, we just ask you, Lord, have your way. Whatever your will, Lord, we ask you to let your will be done. Because you God, and you God all by yourself. But Lord, I come today, just want to ask you, Lord, to be with my brother Willie, lying in the hospital, Lord. Lord, I just pray that you would just touch him with a finger of your love and heal his aching body. Lord, I ask you to touch all the sick and shut in. Lord, I, I don't want to call names today, Lord, because I, I don't want to miss no one, but I know you know all about him, Lord. So, Lord, I just ask you, Lord, to look down on us. Touch us, Lord. Give us the strength to run on. Lord, I, I just, just want to just thank you again, Lord, because you're worthy to be praised. Lord, I, I just don't understand sometimes, but, Lord, it ain't for us to understand. But one day, by and by, we will understand. Lord, so I just ask you, Lord, to continue, Lord. Continue, Lord, to work through the leader of this country, Lord. Lord, work through our minister, our preachers. Lord, work through our teachers. And Lord, everyone needs leadership who all have that authority, Lord. Lord, I just pray that you would touch our youth. Lord, I this sometimes, Lord, I just wonder what tomorrow holds for our youth. But, Lord, I know you, you, you got a ram in the bush for them also. So, Lord, I just ask you, Lord, to just continue, Lord, to touch our young kids and let them know that there's a God. And Lord, I ask you to teach them how to pray and they can call on you when they get in a, in a, in a corner and Satan trying to confuse them. They can say, Lord, 
I love you. Lord, take care of me. Lord, I just thank you. Lord, I ask you to continue, Lord, to be all the member at Green Mill, Lord. The one that can't make it out, Lord, I just ask you, Lord, just, just let them know that we still love them and God love you more. Lord, I just ask you to be with the speaker of the day. Lord, be with Brother Story as he come forth bringing a word. That, that this word was sinking and we will be able to take it out to the world and let them know that we serve a live and living God. Lord, we also want to thank you for Brother Thompson and his family for, for the leadership this show and Brother Ward and Brother Ladd also. Lord, we just thank you for those brothers that lead this congregation. And we just thank you for all our members that look up to the brother and with the respect that knowing that they're going to set the path, pay, path for us to follow. So this is my prayer in your daughter and son, Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Good morning. And sing page number 11 in the folders, page number 11. Have it, shall we sing? Restore my spirit, Lord, I need. Restore, oh, my heart is weary. Please help me, dear. Oh, and I stand in need of more strength from your plea re rebuild rebuild my faith for oh, restore my and revive the fire lord deep in my oh stir my desire to work in your fault light in my heart dear god your zeal grown re renew my rebuild my faithful my soul and renew my courage and it needs all my my cup is please refill it dear and re replace all doubts and fears with faith so bold re my love rebuild my oh restore my soul and restore my spirit i need need don't you know that my heart is please help me and I stand in more strength from your renew my rebuild my faith oh restore my soul let us sing next, 646, 646. Mm. Have it, shall we sing? I, I once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me. And then a little light, heaven filled my soul. And it bathed my in love and wrote my name above. Now just a little talk with Jesus makes me, oh, come on and let us have, let us tell him all about I, I know he will hear our faintest, and he will answer by and now when you feel as your heart to heaven is, I know that you'll find a little talk with all right, and sometimes my path seems dream without a ray of cheer, and then a cloud of doubt and hide the light of day. Well, the mist of sin may rise and hide the starry, but just a little talk, 
Jesus clears the way. Come on and let us have. Let us tell them all about. I know we will hear. I know we will answer. Now when you feel as your to heaven is, I know that you're fine with makes it all all right and I may have doubts and fears my eyes be filled with tears but Jesus is a friend watch it day and night well I go to him and pray he knows my every you know that just a little talk Jesus makes it right. Come on and let us have. Let us tell them all about our. I know we will hear. I know we will answer. When you feel a little prayerful, as your heart to heaven is. I know that you'll find a little talk with Jesus makes it all all right. It's 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 all right. You know just a little talk with Jesus makes it all right. Oh, it's all right. It's all right. It's gonna be all right. It's all right. All right, just a little talk with Jesus makes it right. All right. Amen. Amen. What can make it better than a talk with Jesus? Amen. Amen. Good morning. Good morning indeed. I'm like the psalmist. I was glad when he said unto me, let us. Coming to the house of the Lord. Amen. What a wonderful day it is indeed. Again, I, as always, thank the leadership for, for allowing me this opportunity to, to attempt uh, to expound on God's most holy and divine word. This is a, this is a somewhat special day for me. Uh, this is the first time I, I've been able to be back in the pulpit since my encounter with the old COVID. And I'm in Thanksgiving this morning. For God keeping his, his mercy upon me and my household. Uh, it's just a wonderful thing to know that the God I serve is a God that is a healing God. We, we, before I get into my lesson, I just got a little thought I want to pass on. Because there is a word today, Brother Ralph. There is a word, and I'm going to get there in a minute. But we, we as humans, uh, uh, and more importantly, we as Christians, have everyday problems with fear and with worry. We must work daily, if you will, daily to overcome it, to keep it from overcoming us. Philippians 4 and 6 says, be careful, anxious, if you will, for nothing, but in everything by prayer and supplication. Come on, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known Unto God. First yeah. Peter 5 and 7 say, cast all, not some, cast all your cares upon him, for he careth for you. Much faith, brothers and sisters, much faith repels worry. Much faith, while little faith invites it. Little faith. We know the story of Peter. We, 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 we know how Peter was walking on water in a faithful walk until he started looking, Sister Tina, at them boisterous winds. And then it was then and only then that he began, he began to sink. Jesus had to extend his hand and pull him in. And he said, why did thou doubt? Why did thou doubt? Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with all that heart. You know, you know, when we say all that heart, you got to understand this. I'm going to give you an example, Brother Ralph. When we drive sometimes and we, and we get to a bridge, a big bridge, we, we drive across that bridge with, with full confidence 
Because we know that the, that the pillars and Brother Russell, the pier has been dug deep. And that bridge is sturdy. And we have confidence in that bridge. Something a man made on the highways of life. There are many bridges we're going to cross. We're going to cross many bridges. But that bridge, oh, when you have confidence in the builder, that bridge is built by our God. That bridge is, is sunk deep into his grace and mercy. Do you have the same confidence when you walk through the highways of life and you cross those bridges where, where times are kind of crazy? I got to have more confidence in my God than I do of man. I got to have more confidence that the God that exists in eternity is going to take care of me. Amen. Yes, yes. I'm, I'm not going to hold you along this morning, but I, I, I wanted to, I really wanted to make that point because our confidence indeed has to be in the Father. Amen. Amen. This morning's text has been read, and I thank Brother, Brother, Tom, Brother Billy for, for reading uh, that text this morning. comes from Job 42. Job 42. We, we all know the story of Job. And, and one of the things I want to do today is I want to shed a little light on that story, Brother Ralph. I, I just want to shed just a, just a little, little light. I've been thinking, I've been thinking about questions we have about God. And sometimes we all, uh, if we're not careful, we tend to question God. Uh, and people in the Bible that not only question God, they, 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 they question him personally. God, why did you do this? Why did you do that? You see, when one of the things that I think is important is we might question him, but when God asks questions of us, when God asks questions of us, he's not trying to gather information. No, no, no. When he asks questions of us, he's trying to tell us something. He wants us to look at that question. Uh, 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 he wants to, wants to give it because he doesn't need an answer. He sees everything. So when he asks a question, he's trying to, as an old man used to say, trying to put a little meat on your head. He wants you to look at some things and get an understanding, if you will. Job in the text, Job in the text is responding to a question posed to him by God. We, 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 we know that. and I, I'm going to turn that real quick. Like I said, I'm not going to hold you, but we're going to turn there. And, and Job 38, the Bible reads, then the Lord answered Job. Out of whirlwind and said, who is this that darketh counsel by words without knowledge? Gird up thy loins like a man, for I will demand of thee and answer thou me. The Lord is saying, pull up your pants. Be a man. That's what he's telling. Me. We know the story where God is asking, where, where was thou when, when I laid the foundation? You know, and I think about that when, when God is asking Job that. And I think about how, how mighty God is. Can you imagine a God that, that sets the sun, Brother Ralph, just the right distance to keep us warm and not to, 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 to burn us up? That's the God I serve. He knows exactly where, because if it was a little closer, we might be in trouble. Job, Job, and, and the story of Job, I want us to, I want us to really see when he asked him, if I could put a hat on this lesson, it would be the subtitle here. I see it now. I see it now. A poet once wrote, life, life is lived forward, but only understood backwards. He, he suggests that there's something in our presence that only makes sense if we encompass it in our past. You see, just because something doesn't make sense now doesn't mean it won't make sense at all. It just means maybe, maybe you aren't in the right place or the right season of your life to see it. If any of us are honest and we look back in our lives, if we just take an honest look and look back in our lives in retrospect, there, there are some things, there are some things we didn't understand that we didn't value things that felt damaging when we were going through them. Things that felt damaging, but in retrospect, we gained respect. 
In retrospect, we gain respect for that season because the things I thought was for my destruction, my God, my God was using to develop me. Sometimes when we look back, those things that we were going through, we thought it was for bad. But God was using those things to develop me. We, we, we in our, our foundations book, uh, 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 lesson eight, we just had this week, then we wrap. In, in our thought in mind, come on, Joseph, walk with me. Oh, from the pit to the prison, I was a pathway to the palace. The pit and the prison was a pathway to the palace. Now, I don't, I don't think Joseph saw it right then when he was in the pit. And he certainly didn't see it when he was in prison. But God, the God I serve, knew what was going to happen. The God I serve. So I say again, from the pit to prison to the pathway, it's all about perspective. Huh? It's all about perspective. Where you sit, where you sit is what you see. And what you see determines what you do. I'm going to say that again. Where you sit determines what you see. And what you see determines what you do. Yes, yes, yes. Joseph, Joseph didn't see that then. There are, there, there are, there are some, some things you see, you see, that I can't see. Just, Brother Russell, some things you see that I can't, because I'm not sitting where you sitting. There, there, there are some things that you, you might see, Brother Russell, and, 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 and I just can't grasp that thing because I'm not sitting where you sitting. It doesn't mean they don't exist. It just means I'm not sitting where you sitting. That's why right now, in these perilous times that we find ourselves in, and we are indeed in some perilous times, there, there are those who, who can't understand how in the midst of all that's going on, that we can still come out and praise God. In the midst of what's going on, we can still praise God. They, they, they don't understand how we can walk around with a confidence that surpasses their understanding. Some of them may ask, why? Why are they sitting? Because they're not sitting where you're sitting. You see, when we were saved and seated in heavenly places, my, my perspective changed. I see things differently. When I see the devil and all that he does and his actions, I see it differently. I see it differently because I know that all things, all things work to the good of those that love the Lord. Unless you are sitting where I'm sitting, you will never see what I see. I think back to my life, and, and there are some times in my life I didn't see God working, but he was molding me. It wasn't for my damage. It wasn't for my destruction. He was molding me, Brother Russell. And sometimes it gets a little uncomfortable, but he's, he's molding me. He's molding me. I don't have to wait for the battle to be over to praise God. I can praise him right in the midst of it. I don't have to wait. I can praise him in the midst because the victory is mine. This is important when we find ourselves in a Job-like season. In a Job-like season. What, what, what you may ask him, we know the story of Job. What is a Job-like season? We know how. Wait, wait a minute, I'll tell you what, I'm going to go back somewhere. I want us to see how we were first introduced to Job. Amen. We, we know that the story of Job and how he lost his family, all of his assets, his health. But I want to I shine some light on something, Ralph. Let's look at how the book of Job introduces Job. In chapter 1, in verse 1, it says, There was a man in the land of us whose name was Job. And that man was perfect and upright and one that feared God and discued evil. That's that's how we introduce to Job. We're introduced to Job. Now, but I want you to look down now. Go down a little bit. And now in verse 6, it says, Now there was a day when the sons of man, in the Amplified, it doesn't say sons of man, it says angels. There was a day, I'm just going to say, when the angels came to present themselves before the Lord, and Satan came among them. And I'm going to show you something about that scripture right there. 
It said it was lined, the angels were lined up. Now, Satan tried to say he got all that power, Sister Tina, but he had to get in line, too. Huh? He had, he had to wait his turn. He had to wait his turn. But when he got there, let's look at what he said. And the Lord said unto Satan, Whence cometh thou? Then Satan answered the Lord and said, From going to and fro in the earth and from walking up and down in it. Now, we know he was talking about killing and destroying. And he's talking about what he's doing. Now, here it is. And God and the Lord said unto Satan, Has thou considered my servant Job? Whoa, wait a minute. I know Job might have said, wait a minute, Lord. I mean, out of all the people you, you could choose, uh, I don't wish this on nobody else, but can't you find somebody else? I, I, I don't wish this on somebody else, but, but can't you try somebody else? I want you to look at something. As we go down, Satan answered the Lord in verse 9. Satan said, said Lord, does Job fear God for naught? He, here's what I want you to get. Has not thou made a hedge about him and about his house, about all that he had on every side, had blessed the work of his hands, and his substance increased in the land? Curious scripture. God said, have thou tried my servant Job? The Lord, God didn't say, I put a hedge around him. So how did Satan know? How did he know, Sister Tina, that that was a hedge around Job? God didn't tell him. You know, I'm going to go out, like Ralph said, in my sanctified imagination and say the reason he knew was he had tried to get to Job, but that hedge had protected him. There are times that that hedge that we have sometimes protect us from things that we're not even aware of. That God is taking care of sometimes, even when we're not even aware of it. That's, that, that's, that's, that's what I love about and, and it's curious in that. Now, there are two times in the story of Job. Look at what Satan said in, in, in verse 11. He said, but put forth thy hand now and touch all that he had, and he will curse you, curse thee to thy face. Curse thee to thy face. And we know that later on in the, in the, in the, in the, in the, in the book of Job, his wife, his wife says, you ought to curse God and die. Now that cursing God, I want us to understand what that, what that really means when he say, curse God and die. See, Satan, Satan came and he took all Job's family. He took all the things Job had. But, but in, verse, in chapter 2, he comes back to God again. Because what he had taken in chapter 1 wasn't enough. Now what I need you to understand is that those things and the family members that he took, that's not what he was after. He was after Job's commitment to God. He was after Job's commitment to God. And I tell you, brothers and sisters, your, 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 your walk with God hinges on your commitment to God. Yeah, in these times, in these times we live, I, I, I know that we have to serve a God. But what I love is that out of all that's said, uh, look, at, look at Job 38 and, and verse number uh, 1 through 3. Then the Lord answered Job out of the world when, when he said, Who is this that dark as a counsel? Gird up thy lines like a man, for I, I like a man, for I will demand of thee an answer to me. Look at, look, look at how, Job, how Job answered him when he told, and we all know how he said, Naked, I came into this world. Oh, out of my mother's womb, and naked I shall go back. Now, I'm not saying that Job didn't at some point have questions about what was going on. But his commitment to God was true. His commitment. Job is a good example of his commitment to God. I, I find ourselves in those Job-like seasons when, when, you know how people say, if it ain't one thing, it's another. When, when we just be fall with, with all kind of tragedy, we have to keep advancing without an answer. Sometimes, sometimes we must keep advancing without an answer. Without an answer. A, a season that, that, that we have to know the answer is not coming from God. But God, when he refuses to answer us, I want you to understand when he refuses to give an answer, God is really saying, you think you need an answer, but I'm the God 
that supplies all your needs. And if I don't give you an answer, <laughs> then you don't even need it. I've already given. I've already equipped you with what you need. You know, I, I tell you that sometimes we get blessings in life that we end up using as crutches if, if we're not careful. And God wants to make sure that you don't get locked into the crutch and forget the Christ. Amen. Amen. He wants you to depend on him. Oh, not the crutch. You got to depend, depend on God. Maybe, just maybe, there are some things that I don't understand. That I don't understand what God is doing. Watch this. Because I'm not sitting where God is sitting. Where you sit determines what you see. And what you see determines what you do. <laughs> I see the corner. God sees around the corner. I see, I see the hill. God sees over the hill. I see the day. He sees tomorrow. Where you sit determines what you see. And what you see determines what you do. Oh, the, be the, uh, the, the, the best example I like on this is all we know about, about John 11 with Lazarus. I just think about that, brothers and sisters, because I know I got some Bible readers in here. The, the story of Lazarus. Now, now, remember, when they first came to Jesus, they told him Lazarus was sick unto death. Amen? Amen. Jesus, and whatever they told him, he was sick. Jesus said, he's not sick unto death. That was his statement. He went on and, and his travels and to Judea. He didn't stop and go rush back. You know, now Mary and Martha, we know how they were upset. Now, just imagine... When he got back, and, and, and the Bible tells me it was four days, Ralph. Four days that Lazarus had been there. Where, where, where you sit determines what you see. And what you see determines what you do. Everybody else saw Lazarus as dead. Oh, Jesus saw him as sleep. He's just taking a nap. I'll be there in a minute to wake him up. Where you sit. Determines what you see. They saw death. Jesus said, he's just asleep. And when he got there, he told him to roll that stone away, Russell. And he called out to Lazarus. And he came forth where you sit. Jesus is sitting in a place that we're not. And he told us in his word, my ways are not your ways. And you may not understand. But trust him that he's going to do all that we need him to do. And if he don't do it, it's not because he can't. It's because it wasn't in his will. Amen. I tell you, I can't, I can't talk about that, that kind of fortitude, if you will, without mentioning one of my favorites in the Bible. And that's the Apostle Paul. The Apostle Paul, if you turn with me real quick to 2 Corinthians, the chapter is 11. And the verses are 24 through uh, 26. 24 through, through, yeah, let me make sure I'm right. 24 through 26. We know, we know about Paul. Now listen at, at what the Bible says. In verse 24 it says, Of the Jews five times received I, I 40 stripes, save one. That's 39. I, I'm not a math scholar, but Ralph, that's 39. 25 says, Trice I was beaten with raw. Once I was stoned. Twice I suffered shipwreck. A night and a day I have been in the deep. This is Paul talking. This is Paul talking. He got, he got some problems, y'all. He got some troubles everywhere. This is Paul writing to the church at Corinth and to us today, if we're not careful. He's writing to us. Is anybody here going through something, just been through something, about to go through something? Has, has anybody ever said to you, I would have, I would have never known you were, you were going through that. I, I would have never known. You could have been two days from losing your house, but yet you were still able to come and praise God. And they say, I would have never known. I would have never. The confidence in God. You, you know, if, you, if you're in a position like that and you can still praise God in light of what's facing you. Oh, that's what he looks for. That's what he looks for. You see, there's a thing on your life, a thing on your life called favor, and a thing in your heart called faith. Favor and faith. Favor and faith. 
Oh, I'm here to tell you this morning, the devil can't compete with favor. Oh, he can't compete with favor. Oh, no, and faith. He's petrified. He's terrified of these things because those things will keep, the devil is afraid uh, and is scared of you accomplishing what God has for you to do. Oh, God, God has things planned for us. He, we, the devil will use anything, anything, if you will, to distract you. And, and, and that's what he does. The, the, the Bible was true when he said, no weapon formed against me oh, shall prosper. What does the Bible say? He who has begun a good work in me shall accomplish this thing to the day of Jesus Christ. Yes, yes, yes. Depression, some illness, some disappointments. But scripture says through it all, through it all, God's plan for you will be established. I want you to, I want you to see something here in Paul on that ship. Paul says he was in a shipwreck. Three times. Now, that, that verse calls me a little mystery because as I read Acts, there's only mention of one shipwreck. Now, metaphorically, I know that they're speaking of a situation and things that was going on when he said uh, he had been in a shipwreck. But what I want you, but what I want you to look at, brothers and sisters, is in, in verse, and I want to say it's verse 44. I think it's verse 44 when Paul, no, it's verse 31. When Paul was going through, going through the ship, and Paul said to the centurion and to the soldiers, except ye abide in the ship. Ha! Except ye abide in the ship, you cannot, you cannot be saved. But, 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 but here's the one I want you to look at, verse 44. But Russell, and the rest, some on boards, some on broken pieces of the ship, and so it came to pass that they escaped all safe to land. Broken pieces. I'm here to tell you this morning that sometimes you're going to reach your destination on broken pieces. Sometimes there may be some tears in your eyes, but you're going to get where God wants you to get to on broken pieces. I tell you, Paul said uh, uh, he was in the deep day and night. That's 24 hours. Uh, I, I, Ralph, I, I want to think he had to have been thirsty out there, but he couldn't allow what he was in, physically in that water. He couldn't drink that water. He couldn't wait, allow what he was in to get in him. Us today, we're in the world, and we can't allow it to get in us. Oh, no, Paul said he was in the deep a day and a night. Oh, I tell you, when I think about getting down broken pieces and I think about how sometimes we want things to be just lily white, just the way we want it. I got this picture painted, but sometimes, Russell, you might come in limping. I might come in with some band-aids here and there, but I'm going to make it, Russell. I'm going to make it because he said I would on broken pieces, Brother Ralph. Paul said they made it. I love when he said, except ye abide in the ship. And abide means you got to stay there. You got to, even sometimes when you don't understand, you got to stay there. You got to stay there. Paul said, but I like what he said, if you faint not. Paul said, a night and a day. Oh, uh, Paul, 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 when I say he was in that water. Can you imagine, though, know, being in something like water and being thirsty, but you can't drink it? You know, I look at Naked and Fred, and they be showing them people they can't drink that water that's around. around Sometimes they're around a whole bunch of water, Russell. But unless they boil it and get it purified, they can't drink it. Paul said, I was there a day and a night. And he could not let that get in him. Some things we can't let get in us, brothers and sisters. I, I tell you, one of the things when I think about Paul saying that shipwreck and the trice, three times. I, I found out what trice means, Ralph. That's three times. In our lives. Sometimes Paul, you know, when I look at this, Paul could easily say, man, I ain't never getting in another ship in my life. Huh? He could have said, I ain't never getting in another ship in my life. We do the same thing sometimes, brothers and sisters. We, we, in our love relationship, sometimes you might have a sweetie, and that sweetie doesn't, doesn't give you the love that you gave. And you'll say, I'll never love again. Because of what that person doing. Not knowing that the next ship coming in might be the one God had for you. We get mad sometimes when we trust people. 
and they don't, they don't handle that trust in a good way, what do we say? I'll never trust again. Don't you let the bitterness of your past, don't you let your memory of your past deny you from getting on the next ship. Because I'm here to tell you, there's another ship coming. There's another ship coming. And you can't allow yourself to teach yourself and not be ready for that next ship. Paul said twice, twice. But he kept going. He kept going. You know how we do, though. We, we have a habit of letting sometimes those things in the past stop us. Stop us from going forward. Brothers and sisters, I'm here, I'm here this morning to tell you, we, we as children of God have a, have, a, have a command. We've been charged to trust God. Yeah. We've been charged to trust him. And the wonderful thing about it is not just an order. He gave us a, a whole lot of proof why we got to trust him and why we can trust him. Amen? Why he can when Paul said trice. I love that because he didn't give up. And I bid you this morning, I don't care how it looks how it appears, how the situation looks. It's another ship coming. It's another season coming. Because those Job-like seasons, they're going to come. Oh, they're going to come. And, and, and as you see, Job was an upright man, which means that, that sometimes bad things happen to good people. Job was introduced to us as an upright man. But some terrible things befell him. So just think, just because I'm, sometimes I know, for me, and I can only speak of me, I'll think, man, I'm trying to do right, and it just look like every time I turn around, Sister Tina, there's something in my way. There's something here. I guess I got to get to the point where I say, why, and rather than saying, why is this, I can say, why not me? You say you trust God. Trust him. I think we please him when we find ourselves in stuff that are, that, 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 that's in front of us, have all reason in the world to turn our back, but we don't because we trust God. When you don't understand what God is doing, understand you're not sitting where God is sitting. Where you sit determines what you see, and what you see determines what you do. We will never understand the, the, the mindset of a God that is that good. And I wanna, want you to know that where we sit, each one of us, is how you're going to view God. Do you trust him? Do you really believe that he can do the things that he said he can do? He makes it, he makes it real simple as I, as I approach my clothes with, with, with becoming a child of the Most High. When he tells us to hear, believe, repent, confess, and be baptized. Because I want to sit in heavenly places. Amen. I, I, when I was saved, like I said, it's about perspective, and I see things differently now. I do. I truly see things differently. I, 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 I went through uh, this COVID thing, uh, brothers and sisters, and you all know that me and my household went through with it. And, and I, I got to say this. I got to say this. There are times in life when, when, when things befall us that are serious, that are painful, and we question God. As to why. But I'm going to show you the measure of humility and the measure of trusting in God. My wife said to me during her illness, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. That's a humility. When I'm not looking at, man, I wish somebody else had this thing. But I can say in my heart, I wouldn't wish this on my worst enemy. There's a humility in trusting in God. Trice, Paul said he was on a shipwreck, but he didn't stop. I don't know how many times for each of you that you may have faced whatever it is that you face. Don't miss the next ship because one is coming. He's a faithful God. And he's a God that promised that he will accomplish you. Everything that he has for you to do, if you're here, if you're here and you desire that, oh, I told you he makes it easy to hear that word. Believe, repent, and confess. 
Uh, I tell you, it, I always say that that simplicity is the key to life, and God makes it because He know we we can be a complicated creature sometimes. We, or rather, we can complicate some things. He gives us five steps that can't even be complicated. But look at the benefits that you receive seated in heavenly places. If if you if you're here today, and you find yourself in 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 an unsafe distance from God, or you find yourself where you want to say, Jesus is my Savior. You know, our, our radio broadcast begins with Sunday morning. Y'all know how we are by Sunday morning. Now, I'm showing you something real quick about Sunday morning. Sunday morning, me, now watch this. On Friday, Ralph, they saw Jesus on the cross. Where they sit, they said he got him. Where he sat, he knew on Sunday morning, something was going to happen. <laughs> something was going to happen. That's why Sunday morning is so special. Because, see, Friday, where they sat, oh, they said, we got him. He hung, bled, and died. But Jesus said, oh, Sunday morning. Oh, Sunday morning, there's going to be something going on around here. Because of where he sit. Where he sit. Where he sit. If, you, if you're here this morning and you find yourself in either of those categories, I ask that you might come now while, while together we stand and sing the song of invitation. Holy Spirit, dwell in me and touch my eyes that I might see all your goodness, grace, and power. And stay beside me every hour. And be my drink, be my living bread. And keep me sheltered, and keep me fed. Holy Spirit, Holy Spirit, dwell in me. And Holy Spirit, comfort me. Let my heart be one with thee When I'm worried, soothe my mind Let me sweet contentment find May I run this wicked race He's filled by your amazing grace A Holy Spirit A Holy Spirit Comfort me. Amen. Comfort me. That hedge that I talked about. We, we thank God so times for those things that we're, we're aware that he does. Say, oh, he's a good God. He did. But all oh, there's some times that you don't even know about when that hedge is all around you. And God is taking care of you. I love that scripture because nowhere in Job did it say, God said, I got a hedge around him. Because I mean that. That means that Satan had to find out from practical application, I can't get through. And he said not only was he trying to get Job, he trying to get his whole household. Amen. Sometimes our, our walk and commitment to God not only protects you, but protects your household. Protects the ones that don't even want him. A hedge. A hedge. Oh, I'm thankful for a hedge. I'm thankful for a hedge. Brother, I think you got a request. Yes, sir. Uh, from the live stream chat, we have Sister Hazel Young. She says, pray for me and my family. Pray for my children to come back to the church. Amen. 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 Let us go to the Father. <coughs> Heavenly Father, as we again approach your throne of grace, dear Father, we indeed come in thanksgiving, thanking you for for being our father, thanking you for Calvary, for Calvary, dear father, and what it represents to each and every one of us. We, we yield ourselves not only to your wisdom, but to your will. Our oh, father, you're a good God, and we trust you, and we believe your holy word. We just come now as Sister Hazel to ask for prayers for, for herself and her family and her children, uh, that they may come back to you before it's everlasting too late. I just ask a prayer for us all, dear Father, that we may, may walk in a manner that is indeed pleasing indeed to you. That we, dear Father, as we go about our way, that we will, we will abide in the ship. That whatever we do, we will abide in the ship. We will abide in you, dear Father, 
because in you, by you, and through you, all things are possible. We come now, dear Father, asking this prayer. In the glorious, glorious name of Jesus, may we all together say, Amen. Amen. Let the church say amen. amen. Let the church say amen again. <laughs> Thank you, Doc. Yes, Thank you, Brother Story, for that powerful message. Yes, amen. Amen. What lessons we learned from the book of Job. Yes, amen. And from Paul's journey, uh, from Paul's journey to Rome. Yes, amen. Amen. Whatever you do, church, stay in the ship. Amen. No matter how hard it gets, stay in the ship. No matter what life brings, you got to stay, you got to stay in the ship. I, I like that text you use uh, uh, on broken pieces. Uh, I, I preach the lesson that's entitled on broken pieces. Sometimes we'll arrive on broken pieces. Thank you again. Thank you again for that, for that heartfelt as well as that timely message. Real quickly, we want to go through our announcements. Uh, again, remember our midweek Bible study uh, will be Zooming, Be the Lord's Will, on this Wednesday at 7 p.m. And again, we're still studying from the book of Genesis in the life of, in the life of Joseph. Uh, so if you can, we ask that you will tune in on Wednesday night. Again, our radio ministry, our broadcast every other Sunday, this Lord's Day coming up, uh, will be our Sunday, and we're just asking for those who are members here, those who are even chiming in virtually, if you have an opportunity, tune in to WGNS, 1450 AM, 100.5 FM, as well as 101.9 FM on Sunday morning. The story has mentioned is something about something about Sunday morning. Yeah. Amen. We want to say happy birthday real quick in the upcoming week to Sister Mamie Jo Irvin. Amen. Yes, Amen. On tomorrow. Yes, We're going to sing happy birthday to all of these before we leave today. All right. Uh, then we have Sister Story. Yeah. Amen. Amen. On February the 3rd on Wednesday. And then on Thursday. Sister Sylvia Castleman and Shamika Garrett will be also selling, celebrating birthday. Amen. Sister Jean said, faith move mountain, mm -hmm. but doubt creates them. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. That's a thought, isn't it? Yeah. Faith, uh, according to scripture, mm -hmm. move mountains, but doubt, doubt will create them. Again, we want to thank Sister, Sister Randall. Sister Randa had brought us to Hollywood. <laughs> Amen. I said this morning, Hollywood had come to Green Matter. <laughs> so we're thankful for, for her for that, for that camera and those things that have been set up on behalf of, behalf of us here. Let me read something real quickly, and then I'll, we'll go into the fullness of our service. At the bottom of your program, uh, it says, Looking Unto Jesus. Y'all do know that he's the author and the finisher of our faith. Look to Jesus for life, according to John 14, 6. Look to Jesus for aid, according to Hebrews 2, 18. Look to Jesus for love, 2 Corinthians 5 and 14. Look to Jesus for peace, John 14, 27 and Acts 10, 36. Look to Jesus for guidance. John 12 and 48. Look to Jesus for strength, Philippians 4 and 13. And look to Jesus for freedom, John 8 and 32. And if I could add one more to it, look to Jesus for salvation. Amen. Because salvation has been, has been brought down. Again, Brother Story. 
I, I gave it. I gave it to Russell the other day. Can I give it to you? <laughs> Amen. Let us go into the fullness of our service. Uh, Brother Javon Nelson, come and uh, he will minister unto us our contribution. Good morning. I will do. I'll be doing the offering. I'll be reading Second Corinthians chapter nine, verses six and seven. And it says, but this I say, he which soweth sparingly shall reap also sparingly. And he which soweth bountifully shall reap also bountifully. Every man according as he purposes in his heart, so let him give not grudgingly or of necessity. For God love a cheerful giver. Now let us pray. God, please bless this offering. And please bless the ones that have given. And please bless the ones that shall not give. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. It is now that time of service. We go to the furthermore of our service, which is the Lord's Supper. I re, uh, sing to you a verse of 311. 311. Have it, shall we sing? Oh, what wondrous love I see freely shown for you and me. And by the one who did atone, and just to show his matchless grace, suffered for the race, and in Gethsemane alone, singing, oh, what love, matchless love, match. Oh, what love for me was shown, and his forever I will be, and for the love that he gave to me, and when he suffered all along. Church, amen. amen. This is Paul the Lord's Supper. I'll be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23 to 29. And it reads For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that Lord, Lord Jesus the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup, when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament of my blood. This do ye as often as ye drink of it in remembrance of me. For as often ye eat, this bread and drink of this cup, ye do show the Lord's death till he come. Therefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink of this cup of the Lord, unworthy shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, so let him eat that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eats and drink unworthy eats and drink damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Let's all pray. The gracious Father, we just thank you for this cup, represent the blood you shed on Capri. This bread represents your broken body. Father, so let us all eat and drink this with clean hands. Let us all say amen.
Terry, here he told the three, and Terry, here and watch for me. And by there, no bitter mom. And for the three disciples, while my loving Savior wept, and in Gethsemane alone, singing, oh, what love, matchless love. Singing, oh, what love, for me was shown, for me was shown, and his forever I will be for the love that he gave to me. And when he suffered all along. Have we overlooked anyone? If not, this concludes the Lord's Supper. Anything else? We'll have a closing song. Uh, let us all stand. We'll sing a verse of 189. I've heard of a land of joy and peace and wonderful light. A beautiful place of mansions fair and skies ever bright. Where all who obey the Savior dear forever shall stay. And having been saved by grace divine, I'm going that way. I'm going that way. I am going that way. And Jesus the Savior I adore is with me each day. Oh, I'm clinging to him and never to stray. Yes, singing his praises all day long. I'm going that, I am going that way. Let's pray. Dear Lord, we want to thank you for allowing us this morning to see another day. It was not promising each and every one of us here this morning. Dear Lord, we just thank you for your traveling grace this morning, dear Lord, to allow us to come back out to the fold to learn another portion about you, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we thank you for the speaker of the hour, Brother Story, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we thank you for guiding him this morning, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we hope and pray that everyone took something out of the lesson to learn more about you, dear Lord, and apply it to our everyday life, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we just ask a special prayer for our Elders, Brother Ward, dear Lord, and his family, dear Lord, his wife, dear Lord, continue to be with him, dear Lord, as he's away, dear Lord, continue to be with him and bless him as he's uh, taking on his new medicine, dear Lord, continue to be with him and see him through, dear Lord. Be with us all, dear Lord, be with all our elders here, continue to be with them and their family, dear Lord, and all our ministers here, dear Lord, continue to be with Brother Thompson and his family, dear Lord, and our associate ministers as well. Amen. Continue to be with us all, dear Lord, our sick and shedding, dear Lord, and our elderly members as well, dear Lord. Be with us on our everyday walk, the Lord. Be with the ones that's in school, the Lord, is in the harm's way, the Lord, in medical fields, the Lord. Continue to be with us all during this pandemic. Uh, be with us all. Bless us, the Lord, as you see us go our separate ways. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Let's sing happy birthday.